Welcome to SharePoint Pittsburgh's second tutorial on InfoPath 2010, how SharePoint and InfoPath work together. Today we'll continue using our Happy Scoops order form. We'll fix the error in the form that we made last time using rules. We will publish the form to a SharePoint form library. We'll explain and demonstrate submit options and we will add the form as a web part on a SharePoint site. So let's start by opening our Happy Scoops order form in InfoPath Designer 2010. First we have to fix the error that I told you about at the end of the last tutorial. Were you able to see what it was? Great if you did, but don't worry if you didn't. These types of things come with practice. There are actually two errors. The best way to see them is for me to show you. Let's go to InfoPath Filler. We can fill out the form like we did at the end of the last tutorial. We'll select a flavor, put in a quantity, hit Calculate Price, check the fruit option, put in our name and a number. But if we go back and hit Calculate Price again, it does not count the fruit option before submitting. This would cause the customer to submit an incorrect price, and we can't have that. The second problem occurs when we go in and we change the quantity, but we don't hit Calculate Price again before we submit the order. Again, this leads to an incorrect price. So let's close our preview and return to our form to fix it. So let's go to the Calculate Price button and manage the rules associated with it. We're going to change Rule 1. Let's rename it first. We'll rename it Calculate Price Fruit True. As the name suggests, we want this to run when the fruit option is equal to true. OK. Let's change the value to reflect the extra dollar for fruit by changing this formula to quantity times 0.5 plus 1. Now let's add a second rule. We'll call this one calculate price fruit false. Now this will run when the fruit option is equal to false. We're going to add set of fields value price. The formula will be quantity times 0.5. OK. To fix our second error, we'll add the same two rules to the Submit button. Let's go to the Calculate Price button, right-click on the first rule, click Copy Rule, go back to Submit, click on the Paste icon, and there is your first rule. We'll do the same thing for the second rule, copy, go back to submit, paste, great. Now let's rename rule one. We're going to name it email submit. Now notice the order of the rules. Ideally, we want the prices to calculate before the form is submitted. So we simply go to this drop down arrow and click move down twice. Now our rules will run in the proper order. The order of your rules is always important, so be careful not to overlook that in your InfoPath forms. OK, now it's time to check that our form is working properly. Let's go to Preview, select a flavor, put in 4, calculate the price, check for fruit, let's change the quantity. Now we'll put in a name and a number, but when we hit submit, it does take into account 
that we changed the quantity and that the fruit option was checked. Great, our errors have been fixed. So let's exit InfoPath Filler. And now that I've shown you the errors on our form and how to fix them, we're ready for the next part of our tutorial, publishing this form to SharePoint. Since we'll no longer be emailing the form, let's delete the email submit area at the bottom. Just simply highlight it and erase it. Now we don't have the failsafe of the price being calculated when the customer hits submit. So let's do a few things to make sure the customer sees and submits the right price with this form. First off, let's make this field read only. Go to text box properties, display, check the read only box, and click OK. Now we'll want to add some rules to the quantity field, so let's copy the rules from the Calculate Price button. Once again, we'll right click on Calculate Price, click Copy Rule, go to the Quantity field, Paste, go back to Calculate Price, copy the second rule, go back to Quantity, and Paste again. Now, whenever the quantity changes, the price will recalculate. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. Now we're ready to publish this form to a SharePoint form library. Let's go up to File, Publish, SharePoint Server, and there's already an address in there because I was playing with this earlier. But let's just go to our SharePoint site and double check to make sure that the address is correct. So they look the same to me, but if you wanted to, you could copy and paste if you'd like to be even more accurate. So we'll hit next. And what do you want to create or modify? We want to create a form library. What do you want to do? Create a new form library. The name of our form library will be Order Forms. And the description will simply be Happy Scoops Order Forms. Next. We can promote columns on our SharePoint site. Let's add the column flavors. Okay. We'll also add quantity. These will show up in our SharePoint form library. We'll add fruit option. Click next. And we're ready to publish. This tells us that our form was published successfully. We can hit close. And now let's open up our SharePoint site. Let's refresh this site. And there is our form library, Order Forms. In order to fill out a form, we hit Add Document. Select a flavor. Let's fill out this form, Quantity 9. Calculate the price. Let's just put C4 and hit save. We can make the file name whatever we want. Caroline's order. Save. Now where did that go? I'll show you. Hit close. And there it is. And the fields that we wanted to promote are there as well. Now let's go back to InfoPath Designer and add some submit options. Go to File, Submit Options. We're going to allow users to submit the form to a SharePoint document library. We have to add a new connection. Our document library is the one that we just created. 
We could add this to a different document library if we wanted to, but for now we're going to put it into the library that we just created. So when people fill out the form and they hit submit, it goes to it. Let's copy this address. and paste it. We can take off this end part so we don't need that. Good. Now let's make the file name a formula. Why not make it the person's name? Click OK. OK. Next. Alright, now let's name this submit option SharePoint Submit and click Finish. Okay, now we're just going to publish this form again, but this time we're going to use our Quick Publish. So we go to Publish, Quick Publish. This is a great feature added to 2010 and it remembers all the settings that you used to publish the form before. Now it's connecting to our SharePoint site. All right, it published successfully. Okay. So let's go to our SharePoint site and click refresh again. Now when we go to add a document, we notice this new button up here called Submit. And that is the Submit option that we just added. So let's fill out the form. This time my name can be my real name, Caroline. And my phone number, 555-5555. This time we'll hit submit. Now it goes directly to the form library when you hit submit and it saved it as my name, which is very handy as well. So that's two different ways to submit an order. Now the last thing we're going to do is to look at adding this form as a web part in our SharePoint site. I want to add it to the stores site. So I'll go to Site Actions, Edit Page. You notice these web part boxes automatically pop up. So we hit Add a Web Part, Forms, InfoPath Web Form, Add. We select a form, click here to open the tool plane, and our library's order forms. The type is a form, and these settings are already filled out for us. There are more advanced ones. Let's apply it. Looks good. So we'll hit OK, and we can exit the editing mode by hitting Stop Editing, and there we go. Now, when we go to the store site, it looks like this. It has a web part. So we can fill out this form just like we did earlier, right on the store site. Once again, this time my name will be Candy, and my phone number is 777-7777. And we hit submit. Now notice that after we hit submit, the form stays filled out. So let's go to order forms. And there's the form that we filled out in the store site web part. That's it for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our efforts by subscribing to our YouTube channels, SharePoint Pittsburgh and Nextara.